Whether you're just starting a YouTube channel or you've had one for a while, creative professional thumbnails is what's gonna make sure your videos stand out in the sea of content on YouTube right now. Regardless of your experience in graphic design, I'm gonna show you some free ways to make creative YouTube thumbnails that still look professional and are eye-catching. We're gonna break this down into three categories. There's gonna be websites. So these are free websites that usually just require signing up for a free account. There's gonna be mobile apps. So these are also free apps that you can download to your phone or your tablet to make thumbnails without having to pay anything. And finally, we're gonna talk about one desktop program that's also free to download and free to use. So you don't have to pay anything and you're gonna come away with some professional looking YouTube thumbnails. So before we get started on how to make thumbnails and use these templates from these websites and apps on how to just create them, sometimes you already have a picture or an image that you'd like to use as your thumbnail that's personal to you. But if not, I'll show you four different websites that you can use uh, to find stock photos that are free and high quality. So first off, uh, one of my favorites is pexels.com. So P-E-X-E-L-S.com, like pixels, but with an E instead of an I. Photographers just share all of their images and videos on here that they want to give people for free. You can see they're really colorful, they're really high resolution. So one of the thumbnails I wanna show you how to make uh, is gonna be a travel thumbnail. So let's go ahead and just type in, I'm gonna do mountains, find one that would look like you would have a lot of pop and contrast. I like this one right here. Uh, if you click on the image, you'll see uh, it a little bigger. And then you can also download it here up top in different resolutions. For a YouTube thumbnail, you don't really need anything above HD. Uh, so you'll notice down here you have custom size as an option. 1920 by 1080 is full HD. Let's go ahead and just click that and click free download. So that's gonna be in our downloads for later. As a pro tip, if you don't wanna click and open each one, but you just wanna download it real quick, you can also just click this little download icon right here on top of the photo. But those are good. This is also a good photo right here just because it's got a lot of negative space. So when you're thinking about finding images for thumbnails, look for things with negative space or a lot of contrast so that if you're putting text on top of it, you have room for it. You'll notice when you hover over this, it'll give you examples of who the photographers were or what site it pulled it from. And this is one of the sites I was actually going to show you, which is Pixabay. So let's just hop over to Pixabay. Pixabay has 1.8 million plus free images and videos. So this is a huge, huge library. Pexels, I believe, is a little more curated, but Pixabay has just basically anything you can imagine, kind of like a traditional stock photography website. Um, but let's go ahead and search for, I'm thinking a car, free for commercial use. So let's go ahead and do, I guess we'll do the 1920 by 836. Go ahead and hit download. The third website I wanted to show you is Unsplash. Now this is another one that's powered by creators. So people specifically upload their images to this site and it's kind of curated as well. Um, as you can see, really good quality images again. I'm gonna search for uh, guitar. If you hit this little download icon here, it's as simple as that, no captcha or anything required. Pexels.com, pixabay.com, unsplash.com, and stocksnap.io. Without any further ado, let's get into making those thumbnails. So the first one I wanted to show you is photojet.com. So if you just go ahead and type in photojet YouTube thumbnail in Google, it'll take you directly to YouTube thumbnail maker. So that's the link you're gonna need to go straight there. So if you hit get started, this is gonna open your YouTube thumbnail maker. So we have photojet at the top, you've got save, share, download, free trial, your account. And on the left side, you've got all of the templates a place to add photos, library of things that maybe you've uploaded, a place to get text, a place to find clip art, and backgrounds for these thumbnails. Now the easiest way to create a thumbnail on Photojet is just to go to template at the top left, which is already selected, and they have all selected, so this is all of their templates. You can notice that on the top right of each template, uh, the ones that have the orange icon with the crown means that you'd have to get their uh, plus account which they do offer a free trial of for seven days. Until you need it, I wouldn't sign up. So if you click on the all drop-down menu, you'll see a bunch of different categories. And usually they're pretty good at really finding the ones that you'd want. Uh, for example, I did wanna make a travel video. So let's go ahead and click on travel. And when you click on them, you'll be able to see the different template load here on the right side. But I really like this one here, exploring the highest mountain. When you click on any of the elements that it loads up, whether that's the photo or text or shapes, you'll get this little box that pops up. 
So as you can see, I clicked on text, so it does have font. So you can change the font, the size, the color, bold, things like that. But every element you'll click will also have a property tab. That's gonna allow you to flip it horizontally and vertically, change the layers. So if you want something in front of something else or below everything, for example, the background, you'd want that all the way to the back or the text, you'd want that all the way to the top. You can also duplicate something. So if you click on it, it'll duplicate what you have. You can also delete something. And then the effect tab is especially nice because you can change opacity. So if you wanna see something behind what you drag, you can use that as well as the tint. So if something doesn't necessarily have a color, you can change the tint in order to change the color as well. I don't want photojet.com, so I'm gonna to go to property, delete. And I also don't like this photo in the background. That's not one I wanna use, I already found one. So let's go ahead and hit this delete. Let's go to library. And this will be where you upload photos of your own. I'm gonna hit add photo and find one that I downloaded that I really like. Once you click on it, it's gonna populate it here on the right. And then you can go ahead and drag it to make it bigger. Since this is gonna be the background, there's gonna be text on top. I'm gonna to hit this little icon for bottom. That'll send it all the way to the back. And finally, I'm gonna edit this text and put travel 101. And I'm gonna put get the most from your trip. Now you noticed uh, this little line isn't gonna work there. So let me go ahead and move that line down. I liked this image but it doesn't really give us the effect now that it's blocking him. This is where negative space really comes in. I think this is gonna be a much better photo for what we wanna do. I actually think I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna keep this, make this text much bigger. Drop that right here. I love the font, but I'll change the color to white. Get the most from your trip. I like that. Then it almost looks like the guy's looking at the text. And I'm just gonna skip one of these lines and drag this one out. I'll make this a little bigger. That's kind of nice right there, just like a neon. You can also get an outline if you want. So let's try an outline of black. I might do that on here as well, some glow. That'll really make the thumbnail pop. Now, if we're ready to download, we can hit this download icon. Download, we can change it to JPEG or PNG. I say PNG is gonna be the highest quality. Download. We have a brand new YouTube thumbnail, which I think looks pretty good. All right, the next website I'd like to show you is Crello.com. So that's C-R-E-L-L-O dot C-O-M. So if you go to Crello.com and create yourself a free account, again, you don't have to pay anything, and you type in YouTube, you're gonna see YouTube thumbnail. And again, we're gonna get a ton of different templates. Now you can do blank YouTube thumbnail or you can use one of their pre-made templates. Sometimes that's one of the easiest way to start. Um, I'm gonna go down here and find one that might look good for a car vlog. This one's kind of nice, this business one. So again, you don't have to go with what they say it's for. Go ahead and start with the template and then see where that takes you or what you can do to kind of customize it to what you need it for. So as it loads up here, I can go ahead and click this background and delete it. I don't really need that. Uh, if I go to photos, you can type in maybe car and you'll get some car images, but these look way too staged. Uh, I'm gonna go to my files and I just uploaded this car image. If you hit upload image, it'll allow you to upload an image and it populates it here. Click on it. If I go over here and hit set as background, it'll resize it automatically. And I'm just gonna scoot it over here to the left side. Vlog 001, instead of how to put NYC. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. Maybe just put my name. I do not like this font. Let's stick with oxygen. Honestly, I'm really digging this already, but I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna click on these others and I'm gonna change the coloring to be more blue. So we're almost done color coding these assets to be the same as everything else. And then what we go ahead and do is download at the top right. Let's change it to PNG download. Here is that thumbnail and I think it looks pretty sweet. The final website I'm gonna show you is snappa.com. So Snappa, like the others, has tons of templates. All you have to do is register for a free account and you can get started. So let's show you how to use snappa.com. 
you'll see social media posts. It's got YouTube thumbnail ready to go. So let's go ahead and open that up. And what I'm gonna do is make a thumbnail for New York City, what, what to visit or what, what to see. Um, so let's go ahead and see what kind of templates they have that are available to us. I do kind of like this one because it stands out. I, I see this type of thumbnail quite a bit and I do end up clicking on it. So we'll go up to background at the top left. Uh, it has this little arrow showing you where to go. Um, and I am gonna go ahead and hit remove. Let's go to uploads because I already have an image I found on one of the websites I saw of these taxis. It's gonna upload that to our gallery. If we click on it, it'll go ahead and upload it right to where you need it. So that's a super fast, easy way to just get, get in and get out. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and change YouTube to say, let me see, let's do places. to visit. There we go. I like the opacity to be a little lower on that. I'm gonna click everything and shift click so I can select everything and move it to the middle. So if I click on the background and I do effects, we can add an overlay as well, which might give it a little bit more pop. If you were to wanna to add more text, you can go to text at the top. They also have graphics like the other websites do have as well. Um, that you can add. So this one will be a coffee icon. I'll change the color to white. Might find another one that looks like a plane. I'll also change this one to white as well. Move that up to the top right. And that's what we've got. So if we hit download at the top right, and then we do web optimized JPEG, that'll give us a small size while also still being HD here on Snappa. Let's go ahead and open it up. That's what it looks like. And I think that looks pretty sweet. So I'd like to show you a couple resources that I love to use, some apps that are on mobile. Two of my favorites are gonna be Canva, just like the website that we found, and also Adobe Spark Post. These are two free resources that make making thumbnails easy. Let's start with Canva. If we go ahead and open up Canva, the design is also similar to the website. You will have to create a free account in order to use the app, however. Next up, you'll see the search bar at the very top. Go ahead and tap on that and just type in YouTube thumbnail. And that'll bring up all of the templates they have specifically for YouTube thumbnails pre-made that we can start editing. You'll notice that the ones that have a little free icon on the bottom right of them are gonna be free. They don't have any assets in there that you would have to remove if you didn't want to pay for their premium subscription. However, if you do see one that you really like that doesn't have that free icon, usually the asset that's inside of it can be swapped out for something custom of your own anyway, and I'll show you how to do that. So don't let the templates that don't have free on them scare you away because there is a way to get around that. Let's go into an example of one of those. So you'll notice here on the left side, my top five simulation video games. It doesn't have the free icon, but I wanna use that template because it looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead and tap on it. And you'll notice it has the Canva icon there on the right side on top of the lady with the VR headset. That tells you that that's the asset or something in that area is premium. So let's go ahead and tap on it. And here on the bottom menu, if you scroll all the way to the right, you'll notice this little eye icon. Tap on that and that'll tell you the resource that costs money. So you'll notice it's the virtual reality gamer uh, from Getty Images. So it is the image. So all we have to do to get around paying for this template is swapping that out with something of our own. So since I already have an image that I can swap it out with, we'll do that. But before we do so, let me give you a rundown of how the app works. At the very top left, you're gonna see the home icon to go back to the home page. You'll also see the three dot menu in order to see some things on how to save your image and share it and resize it. You've got the crown icon if you'd like to go ahead and upgrade. You've got this download icon as well and share as well. On the bottom menu, you're gonna see this icon here for duplicating objects. You're gonna see deleting objects with the trash can, replace an object so you can just swap one out in one click. Effects is gonna allow you to change effects for photos. Same with filter. Adjust has some more specific adjustments that you can use for sliders like brightness, contrast, saturation, etc. Crop will allow you to do just that. Flip will let you flip the asset. Position will allow you to change where it is on the layers. So if you have something on top of another thing, you can move it forward or to the back, for example, for a background. You also have a paintbrush icon. And finally, this transparency icon. Uh, the others you won't really need to use. Now that you have a rundown of that, you also have a zoom icon on the bottom left. So if you wanna zoom in, 
to see what you're doing, you can do so. But let's go ahead and get started. So let's replace this photo by, first of all, just tapping on it and hit replace on the bottom left. And I'm gonna go into my camera roll and find this image of me that I like. So once I tap on it, it drags it right in. And if I do crop, that'll allow me to crop it just where I want it to be. And just like that, it has dropped it into my image. And you can see these assets, these other assets are all over. I kind of like the, the fact that this one on the top left is black. Uh, I don't like this blue one down here. I'm gonna change that to black as well, just to give it something else. You can also rotate your assets or anything using the two arrowed icon and dragging it. I'm just gonna double tap this text here so I can change it. And I'm gonna tap in 10 creative photo and video ideas. And I'm just gonna get rid of the text here. And I think I'll get rid of that icon as well by hitting the trash can on the bottom. So there's delete element and delete group. Deleting the element will delete just one thing. Deleting the group will delete the whole square. So let's do delete group. And I'd like to add just a little icon of like a camera. So let's tap on this plus sign here in the bottom right. And you're gonna notice there's templates, uploads, photos, elements, text, videos, camera roll, background, folders, and more. Text will allow you to add more text. But let's do elements. And I'm gonna search for an icon of a camera. And the ones that have the pro icon, you would have to pay for, so let's not do that. Let's find something that isn't pro, but still looks kind of cool. I think this one here on the left side looks pretty nice. Drag that where I want it and resize it. And that looks pretty good there. Well, let's zoom in. I like that a lot more. All right, I'm gonna add an exclamation point here at the end. And honestly, I think this thumbnail is looking pretty good. So we'll go ahead to the top right and just hit this download icon to save it. It's gonna go ahead and prepare your design. And just like that, you are done. So you can continue editing or go to your home page, and our thumbnail is finished. This is what our thumbnail looks like once it's done, and I think it looks pretty nice. But let's say you don't like any of the templates. They do have a lot of great templates. If you go back to home, type in YouTube thumbnail, they do have a lot of great templates, and that's gonna be the absolute easiest way without any graphic designing uh, required. But if you wanna start from scratch and just play around, tap on the blank one at the very top left and it's gonna automatically ask you if you wanna use templates, just swipe down where this little pill is. And we have a blank canvas. You can make a complete thumbnail just from this because Canva has all of the resources you need, whether it's photos, text, icons, you name it. So let's go ahead and start. I'm gonna tap on this plus icon on the bottom right, and I'm gonna tap on photos. Now this is their photo library, not mine. And let's say I wanna make a video maybe about like finding time for yourself. Um, I'm gonna scroll down and I see this one right here with these mountains and this little sun, sun flare. I really like that, it looks pretty serene. I'm gonna go ahead and drag it where I want it. Now if I go back to the bottom right, I'm gonna add some text, tap on the plus sign and hit text. And they give you some uh, stylized ones already. Let's see if any of these would look kind of nice. Maybe this one here. Now if you double tap on one of the elements, you'll see that this square is in a bigger square, so those are two linked objects together. And I'll tap on the next one here. And what I'll try to do is with this bottom one selected, I'll go to the bottom here and it'll allow us to edit our text. And that lets me change the color of one without the other. That looks pretty good. I think I am gonna go back to this background and lower it just a bit, simply because that's gonna make it look a lot better. Now, if I go back down to elements, I'm just gonna look for maybe some abstract shapes that I can use. Okay, so I found a couple shapes that I like here and I'm just gonna edit this globe here to be the same color palette as what we already have. Uh, so I'm gonna take away all of the blue. 
And the same over here, I'm going to get rid of the red and maybe change this to, let's see, possibly something more like the mountain. And just like that, you already have another YouTube thumbnail that we've completely made from scratch. So if we download it, I think that looks pretty good. Now we'll move on to the next app, which is Adobe Spark Post. Uh, you will need a free Adobe account in order to use this app, and it will prompt you to try and get the premium subscription in order to get kind of some extra assets and templates. However, you don't have to sign up for anything to use it. It is totally free. So at the top right, you're gonna see this search icon, tap on that. And let's put in YouTube thumbnail. And you have a slew of different templates. However, all of these ones with this little badge, this yellow badge, are gonna be the premium templates. So you're gonna to wanna to avoid those if you don't wanna pay a cent. So this very top one here, I noticed that in the middle, it has two different sides. I really love that, uh, that look for templates. So let's go ahead and hit remix this template and you'll see the Adobe Spark watermark on the bottom right. Tap on that and that'll allow you to remove it. On the bottom it says remove the watermark on this project. And you're gonna have a couple different options on the bottom. Add will allow you to add images, video, text, icon, sticker, and logo. Colors is gonna allow you to change the colors of whatever is selected on your palette. So for example, if you just click on it, it'll change the color palette for you without having to do basically any work, which I really do enjoy because it gives you a good starting point even if you don't want to stick with this um, it's a good way to just get started so let me actually find one that i like i think i'm going to do this one here i really like this palette so i'm going to hit done and if we go ahead and tap on that photo on the right side i'm going to hit replace on the bottom left and change it to something in my photo library found the photo i want so i drag that in drag it where i want it perfect now over here, I don't really want these waves, so I'm gonna tap on them and hit delete at the bottom. You can also duplicate them and select multiple things or change the order of it on the layer mask. You can also adjust it by rotating it, nudging it, flipping it, change the color or the opacity. But I'm gonna go back to edit and hit delete. Let's select the text that I want. I don't want this one here, delete. I'm gonna double tap on the three, make it 15. Drag that to the middle, make it a little bigger. And down here, I'm gonna change this text to say, photo tips. Let's do photo tips and tricks. Okay. And as you drag it, it's gonna resize it for you automatically. I am noticing I'm gonna to have to recenter this a little better. I do not like this font, so I'm gonna tap on the text and hit font. And let's find some font that uh, isn't too distracting, looks kind of clean. Finding font can be the hardest thing for me. I think I like this one here. So we're gonna stick with that. I'm liking this color scheme a little bit, but not enough. So I'm gonna tap on my face and adjust the, the looks here. So looks is gonna give you the the color filter you have. I'm just gonna make it grayscale instead. I like that a little better. And I'm also gonna change the color of this text to something more neutral. I might even change the element here in the back, this blue to a black. And there's another one I notice here that's black. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna adjust, let me just take away the filter altogether. <laughs> and then I'll go to enhance brighten it up a little bit to give it some pop contrast as well. And I really actually like that thumbnail. So we're gonna go ahead to the very top right on the share icon and we'll hit save image. There it is. So that's one image with Adobe Spark. Let's see if we can make one more. And this time maybe we'll do one that has to do with uh, budgeting tips. I like this one here that says color, intro to color theory. Let's tap on that and see how easy it is to uh, remix this a little bit. So I'm gonna get rid of this watermark here by tapping on it. I'm gonna tap on the background. I'm gonna hit edit and replace. So I imported this one that looks like money <laughs> and you can already see it did a good job of just adding it there in the background, but it could be much bigger so that you can see that it's money. I'm gonna get rid of intro too. Don't really need that at all, just delete. All right, so now I'm gonna double tap it and actually change what the text says. 
and I'm going to put budgeting tips. And just like that, we have a thumbnail that actually looks pretty good and I think would stand out. So we'll go to the very top right and hit the share icon, hit solid color, and save image. There it is. Uh, and that looks pretty professional to me uh, because it already cuts out the text. If you wanted to do that with on your own, if the text wasn't already cut out, when you tap on the text, you can go down to effect and you can see outline, shadow, cutout. Uh, cutout is kind of the coolest one. So those are a couple apps that I love to use to make YouTube thumbnails on mobile. Hopefully that was helpful. I'd like to show you how to use a program on Windows and Mac so that if you want to download something and get even more in depth and more creative, you can. If you wanted to do some more in-depth editing, for example, I'm going to edit this photo right here into a thumbnail and actually trace around myself and give myself an outline. Some things that will require Photoshop-like features, but a free version. What I'm going to use is GIMP. So if you search that on Google, the very first link there, this right here is GIMP. Um, basically, it's a knockoff of Photoshop. So first of all, right off the bat, you're going to need to make your own canvas or format this image correctly for YouTube. So let's go up here and hit File, then New. And this is where you're going to hit the image size or dimension. I'm going to make it HD, so 1280 by 720. And you can see I just entered that there. And then hit OK. So now this is resized perfectly for YouTube. I'm going to zoom out just a bit by hitting the minus sign on the keyboard. And I'm going to go ahead and go into my folder and just drag one of my images on here. Now you can see it's already too big. So if you go over here to this little this little bar here, in this box you'll find the scale tool right under the magnifying glass. If you click on that and then click on your image, drag one of the corners in, and you notice how I'm being squished and it's not really natural looking. If you go back over here and uh, tap keep aspect, that'll make sure it resizes correctly and you don't get all warped. So I think that's probably a good size, let it scale, and then go up here to this uh, thing that looks like a, kind of like a compass, the move tool, and then just select your image and drag that where you need it. That's pretty good right there. Right there's good. Okay. Now I actually want a background behind myself, so what I'm going to do is drag another image on, say this city. Um, actually, I don't like that image. Change my mind. Let's do the let's do the plane. Have a few options here. Okay, I'm gonna have to resize it again, so I'm gonna go to the scale tool, tap on the image, drag in on the corners, and as you notice, keep aspect is already on, so I don't have to click that. Hit scale, let it scale itself. And as soon as I'm done with that, I'm gonna move it with the move tool. I'm gonna move it right over here. So this is gonna be my behind myself. That's the idea. Now over here is your layers. You can see that the uh, picture that you see right here is on top of me. It's on the top. I'm going to drag that right below me. So now you can see I'm on top of uh, the plane. Now if we select the image of me and then go over here to this thing that looks like a lasso, free select tool, and then hit shift and plus to, to zoom in, I can select by clicking around myself. Now I'm just using the mouse and moving some points. I'm just basically creating an outline around myself uh, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the background behind myself. You see the bricks on the wall. Uh, and I'm also going to put a small uh, like shadow behind me. So to do that, I'm going to have to get rid of that background. And this is how you do it. This is one way. You can also use this little wand magic select tool, but I notice sometimes it doesn't get exactly where I need, so I end up just taking and doing it by hand. It's a little easier. Uh, notice that I can't select any further because it's too far away. Hit the minus, zoom out. All of this is just blank area, so it doesn't matter what you select out here. Um, go ahead and hit delete, and you see what happens. It deletes that area. So if I hit Control Z to go back, what I want to do is delete the rest the opposite. So go to select on the top left, invert, basically selecting the opposite of what we just drew around. And now I'm going to hit delete and now I have what I want. So 
what I'm going to do to make myself have a have a shadow actually is uh, if you hit control shift a you're basically getting rid of your selection what I want to do since I have myself selected is I want to make a shadow so I'm going to go to tools no sorry filters and go to light and shadow I'm going to go to drop shadow and it minimized it but untick allow resizing or your sizing will get all weird and this basically controls how big your shadow is going to be. I'm just going to leave it there and hit OK. And what you'll notice here is on the right side of me, I'm kind of separated from the background. That's the look that I wanted. Let's add a little bit of text. Go over to the A icon. Select this color right here that's naturally black. And uh, just choose a color and hit OK. Tap anywhere. Well, first let's change the font. As you'll see, this is sans font. If you click on the double A, you can choose a different font. I'll go with scribble box, and I'll change the size to 40. Enter. OK, let's tap anywhere and just put, this is an example. All right. I'm going to select all of this by double, triple tapping, actually, and make it bigger by adjusting the size. You can also enter it here, so like 80 or 100 or 200. That's actually pretty good. I'm going to select somewhere in the middle of these words and backspace and hit enter so it drops down to another line. And I'm also going to move it over here. Oops, control Z. Move it over here. And I'm going to put this text under myself so that I'm in between myself and the background. So I'm going to take this layer. I'm going to drag it below me and the drop shadow. And there you go. Uh, I'm going to hit, I'm just going to select the background because that's not visible. And you can see kind of what I have here. So this is exactly the size you'd want for YouTube. And this is also already a YouTube thumbnail. And if you wanted to go a little bit further and make your text stand out, you can select the area where your text is, go up to filters, and repeat the drop shadow. And now that's also standing out. So that's kind of cool. Some people like to colorize their image and make it all bright green or blue. I'm going to do that for you. Let's go to uh, this image where the plane is at. Go to Colors and Colorize. What this is going to do is just color your whole image to the hue that you select. So if I drag this left and right, you're seeing that the color changes. It's kind of a nice blue. Hit OK. And now it kind of stands out. Now if you want to export this and make this a file, go to File. Export to example.png. Let's make that JPEG, JPG for a smaller file. I'm going to put that on my desktop, export, and export again. So now if I go to my desktop and go to example, if I can find it, this is my image. It's been a pleasure to kind of show you what I've been able to use to make thumbnails for my YouTube videos. And I hope that it's been helpful to you as well. And I hope to see you guys in the next one.